Fox, team. Team, Caleb. What's going on, Ken? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Camera and Flask. Flying in by the seat of my pants, hair on fire. Uh, but I'm excited because uh, I'm joined by two delightful men. And uh, before we jump into their faces and how beautiful and lovely they are, uh, just a reminder, this show happens every single week on Wednesdays uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we grab a beverage. Please do the same. Doesn't have to be alcohol. It can be coffee, water, whatever floats your boat. A little bit of lemon in there. You know, whatever you got to do. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we got a bunch of people in the chat. Thank you guys so much for joining <laughs> us. And uh, this is going to be fun. With me, we have the beautiful Ben Barden. Looking mighty fine over there. How you doing, sir? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Thank you for that introduction. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Well, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Look at that lighting. It's so good. Uh, and then we have over here uh, with uh, Sir Friend, Mr. Ken, yes. uh, Jem Schofield. Hey. Look at those uh, fingerless Ken, gloves. Nice. Ken is, is making the beeline uh, to PDX, but this is Ken Zabar. Uh, Mr. Ken Potts, who is, he's part of the crew. And so uh, both Ben and Caleb know him. And uh, out here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, which has been bucketing down for the last couple of days, as it should in November, uh, Ben and I have been getting ready to shoot a series of videos on uh, some new stuff and uh, existing stuff. And, and uh, I've got two glasses here so that he can have just a, a, a a nano dram before he heads out uh, to Portland. So there you go. Okay, back to you, Caleb. Boom. Okay. So at this point, uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about lenses. Uh, we're starting another series. We started one last week, or maybe the week before. Um, and we're going to start today in part one by talking about our favorite lenses. Um, huh, that's interesting. We'll have to make sure this is reloaded here. There we go. Okay. Am I echoing, by the way? Let me know, folks, if there's any issues there. It's You're been not. one of those days. It's been one of those days. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about our favorite lenses. But first, before we do anything else, we're going to go around and pour ourselves uh, some drinks. So uh, <laughs> I just realized you were giving me all the cues, dude. <laughs> so, Jem, <laughs> what you drinking? Well, Ken and I are going to have... Uh, I don't even know if I like this stuff, but it's. I, I can't keep circulating like... Caleb does with the same bottle every week. Actually, last week you mixed it up a little bit. Yeah, Mr. For four, ro four Roses. Uh, so it's a Glen Morangi. Uh, again, not my favorite. Would you mind pronouncing that? Nectar Duar. Nectar Duar. And uh, it was a present. It tastes pretty good. It's not smoky or anything like that. We'll listen. There you go. Ooh. And so um, I'm going to just do a little pour here for Ken and I, and oh boy, maybe I shouldn't give Ken that much before he drives. Here, I'm gonna give you the little one here, and then we're gonna wait and let's see what Ben has. <laughs> well, interestingly, I'm also on Glen Morangi. <laughs> hey, oh, but I like that one a lot more, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this is really good. This is really is good. good. This is the uh, this is the La Santa yes. sherry cask finish one. So this has a, a little more depth to it, I think. Okay, but, good. Oh, oh, by okay. the way, I just got a comment um, that I should try the Angel's Envy bourbon. I do want to say that it's a good bourbon, but I love, I love Angel's Envy rye. So um, I've had both, and the rye wins for me. Okay, Caleb, you're up. All right, here we go. What's it gonna? Is it gonna be four roses? Oh, maybe. Oh, 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 three, three nope. roses. Oh, there Jamie. we go. Focus. Focus. All right, IPA edition. What does that mean? I this was a gift, and when yeah. I first saw that, I was like, "Get out of here! What are the what have hipsters done to this country?" They have um, <laughs> because IPA. I feel is you know I'm not a big IPA guy, and I feel like it's a huge fad right now. Like I wonder yeah. if somebody like remember when everyone like everything was IPA, and now it's in whiskey. So it's not in whiskey, but um, Jameson essentially right on the back here. Uh, we're always willing to do new things, which is always like, okay. The well, Irish way. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Um, so essentially it's, it's, it's whiskey. They like 
exchange barrels back and forth with IPA something and they put whiskey in the barrels and now it's Jameson. Yeah, so you know what's interesting about that? It's like the opposite of what's been going on. They take whiskeys, right? And they right. and they age them in basically, especially scotch, in bourbon and sherry casks. Right. Now they're taking whiskey and they're aging it in IPA. I don't understand what's going on with that. Apparently. Okay, that is hipster. That's very hipster. Yep. Okay. So here we go. It, take us in for a cheers. I'm going to bring oh. uh, Ken into this one uh, full screen just, so, that just a, we, so you guys can see. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Cheers. To everybody over there. Boom. Okay. And there we go. <sighs> oh, and we're off. Okay. It's so weird. You are, it's, a it's a little hoppy. It's really trippy. It's a okay. hoppy whiskey? Okay. So here... Um, so it's about lenses or whiskey. Well, it's it's about both. <laughs> I mean, I have a I was gonna get a green spot, by the way. This could go way too. By the way, let's just talk about something here. Um, before we <laughs> before we get in and let the captain uh, steer the ship, um, this is gonna seem silly, but you might wonder if we actually drink normally in the middle of the day. Ben is he gets a free pass. But uh, Caleb and I don't necessarily drink in the middle of the afternoon, except for now every Wednesday. So uh, if you see me drinking this god awful thing on the side, <laughs> it's 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 Doctor Price's electrolyte mix. It's so that I can get through this goddamn thing and we can continue to function later on uh, with the normal lives that we lead. Does that make sense? There you go. It's it better makes than perfect Pedialyte. sense. Okay, good. All right, Caleb. Uh, <laughs> let's go, bud. All right, let's do it. So for me, it's five o'clock. So, I, you know, I'm in that OK free phase, but mm. you're over there in like three in the afternoon or something, right? That's true. So here we go. Lenses. We're talking about our favorite lenses. I see Jem has the megaton load over there and it's ready to settle in. So we can do this one of two ways. We can each take turns or why don't we start with our widest focal length and go around wow. and just work through it all. How do you like that? Does that work for you guys? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so so Ben, widest focal length, and we're talking about favorite lenses. I mean, that can be, you know, you can tell us what that criteria is for you and then jump into that first focal length. So I use wide a lot because for interiors I shoot, or for still photography, I shoot a lot of interiors. So my 1635 that is actually attached to the C200 at the moment and pointing at me mm. is probably the lens that's in the two versions of it that I've had that has probably earned me the most money of any piece of glass I've ever owned. So that's that's a really useful thing. It's not the best for um, for interiors, but it's, it's flexible. Um, there's wider stuff and primes that don't have the, um, the optical issues that that does in terms of barreling. It's not great on that. But Canon have a, a decent profile that's built into uh, Lightroom, which nicely solves that with a single click. So that's mm. that, that's my widest. I don't have anything wider at the moment. I used to have the Samyang, was it a 14 that they did? Uh, mm. They don't call it Samyang where you are, they call it... Um, Rokinan. Rokinan, that's them. Yes, yeah, mm. so they had that 14, but they used to give these weird kind of star shapes on any kind of highlights, so I... Mm. Which I wasn't mad keen on, but it was an okay lens. But... That for now is the widest I've got. And you're using that, that a lot that for lens. video as well? Only since go, going on to the C200, I've been using mm. it quite a bit because it's quite a good, it's quite a good range. The 16 to 35 on a, on on a super a, 35 a millimeter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty useful um, for that at the moment. And because it's the Canon lenses with that, the AF's great and it's quiet. Whereas some of the other brands, i.e. Sigma lenses, which we'll go on to in a bit, which work well with the AF system on there, but they're noisy. You get this. Mm. So if, you, if you've if you've got a shotgun on there, that's going to pick it up. It's fine if you're if you're using labs, but yeah. So at the moment, it's kind of skewed my uh, sort of lens purchasing plans a bit at the moment because I was kind of heavily down that Sigma art line. Mm. Now I'm thinking back right to me. But we'll uh, see. We'll see. But I love those things. Yeah. Um, 
definitely going to get to you guys in the chat. So hang in there. We'll be addressing some of that stuff like the Leawa, Lawa. I should say Lawa. I don't know why I say Leawa. So we'll get to that stuff in Sigma. Hawaiian. Sig yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's. Uh, no, I, but I mean, it sounds like. Oh, Lawa. my accent. No, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. Luau you. or something. How about yeah. you? How about you, Jim? What's your widest focal length? Boom. Mm, that's a good question. Well, I think we should acknowledge that. You know, when we're talking about this, a lot of it also has to do with the camera system that we're using. So if we're settling in on a micro four thirds camera, then we may tend to lean towards wider focal lengths naturally because we want to get similar field of views that we would be getting on uh, an APS-C, a super 35 millimeter or even a full frame uh, sensor camera. Uh, most of the stuff that I shoot is um, I guess you say crop sensor, APS-C slash super 35 millimeter. So, um, and I also don't tend to shoot very wide that much. So I have a 17 to 40 um, Canon F4, which I don't very, very much like, and I haven't used it in a long time. Um, I, <clears throat> I have two Tokinas, um, which are zooms, and one of them is the sort of, you know, the darling child of the early switch over to, you know, DSLRs, it's just the 11 to 16. So um, mm -hmm. I think very similar look and feel wise um, in terms of kind of warmth to a Canon, uh, you know, EF or EFS lens. So it, it kind of fits well into that look that those lenses have. Um, and it's, um, again, it's an F4 and I mean, sorry, it's an F2.8. Um, and that's uh, has a nice little feature where you can switch between AF and manual focus uh, with hard stops when you're in manual focus. And then there was a deal on B and H last year, and I picked up the 12 to 28, which is an F4. But it was like it was like for a song. It was $199 or something like that. Oh, and wow. I I really liked it because it was a it's a really nice range because you get a nice wide at a 12, but you can go to a 28, which is a kind of just getting into a normal focal length uh, in terms of focal length range. So I haven't used it a tremendous amount, but it's nice to have in the kit when you're running around and you need to get a little bit more of a landscape and then you might need to pop off something that's a little bit a little bit tighter um, in terms of a shot. And then on some of my other camera systems, I mean, I do have one 20 millimeter lens, which is one of three lenses that I have that are these little Voigtlander pa uh, pancakes. Um, it's not super fast. It's an F3.5. And then I have um, most of the other lenses that I have are basically uh, a 21 millimeter or longer in focal length. Um, and that tends to be what I lean to anyway. I sometimes will do like an 18 on a crop sensor camera, but uh, I, I don't tend to shoot very wide that much um, overall. Yeah, that's what I got. You, Caleb? Very nice. Um, yeah, those those Voigtlanders are sexy, those little pancakes. Especially so the, 40, me, the 40. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So for me, the, the two wide angles, um, which I think, for, unfortunately, I didn't get everything, but I don't know how wide we're going. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the one I recently reviewed, and people were just talking about uh, Lawa. This is the yeah. 12 millimeter 2.8 full frame. Did a review, mm -hmm. zero distortion, crazy sharp, even at 2.8. A little dark episode, by the oh way. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah. This lens, and those guys over there are making some wild stuff. If you just check out their lineup, every single lens has like some wild like they just came out with a 10 to 18 full frame 10 millimeter on a full frame the field of wow. view is i mean this one's 120 degrees wow. zero distortion that that one i can't even remember it's just ridiculous like you see your hand on the camera almost so this is a 2.8 as well which is insane to have it mm -hmm. that fast and it to not be huge there's an adapter on this which makes it look a little bigger is it heavy? Um, What's the closest focus? Like, yeah, distance? it's pretty beefy. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. Close focus is uh, 0.6 feet or 0.18 meters. So it's pretty close. Um, I mean, in, in the video, I did this where I, you know, framed up where I was this far yeah, away from the, the lens. That was the best part. That was awesome. And and it was like a med it was like a, a, a medium close up. It's insanity. <laughs> it's insanity. It is heavy. It is pretty heavy. It's all metal, 
but for video work, it's really, really, really smooth. Yeah. Um, uh, another wide lens is the, the Sigma 18 to 35, mm -hmm. just because if you're a YouTuber, you have to own it. It's just part of the, the code. I have not one really. on the other side. Yeah. 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 But, uh, not really, but it is, it is really good. Um, it's really limiting being stuck in that range, but, um, that one eight is just magical. And that's what I would love to see more of. I know physics wise, it's difficult to do, but man, wide angle, fast glass is just so fun. Like, can you imagine like an, a 16 millimeter F one eight or one two? Yeah. Um, that would be so, so nice. And that's yeah. up into that's the next lens for me is 35. So I think I'll stop there for, for the, the let wide me, stuff. Let me, you, let me ask you, let me ask you, you know, we, we've done one episode of the future of production. It got a right. little, it got a little, we had a little less focus. It was probably our least <laughs> focused uh, episode. And we went it, way it, out in the weeds. It got a little dark in places as well. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to throw this out there because you're saying that there's a couple of companies doing some really interesting kind of things with lenses right now. Do you mm. think that as sensor technology advances, that possibly what um, lens manufacturers can do with lenses will change from how they might design a lens right now with number of elements and groups and uh, optics and things like that because of the way, I don't know. I, I mean, because we don't even know what the the camera side of it will or won't be able to do. Yeah. We have that new, you know, the new L mount. Um, and there's three companies that are part of that, right? We have Leica, we have Panasonic and Sigma. And maybe because of that combination of those three companies, there may be things that can be done with lenses that make them smaller, but allow them to do things that aren't really possible now. Do you think that's a possibility? I mean, there's a certain physics to it, but maybe there's yeah. also how it interprets what's coming in. We already have lens correction, right? That's right. pretty advanced inside of these things. What do you guys think about that? That's a great question. Um, it would be interesting. Like, I, I'm not smart enough to know, but like, is there a way to, like, for instance, Micro Four Thirds, there's a limit to how much resolution you can get out of that, right? Mm. I mean, is there future advancements where they can get that sorted? And then, because right. like, I think it's it's got to be possible to make things smaller because this company is doing it somehow. Um, now there's downsides, like the flaring on this is disgusting. Is it's that full not, frame? Yeah. Yeah, full oh, wow. frame, 12 mil. They make a 7.5 micro four thirds. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe that's APS-C, I can't remember. Um, right. But yeah, so there's some downsides, but they have to be able to... I would love to see this company do what Sigma did. Remember when Sigma was just terrible? <laughs> mm -hmm. They made just really bad lenses. They were like the cheap knockoff company. And now they're, you know, they, they might not make the best optics in the world, but they're so much better. Be cool if uh if the if Lawa did do that kind of move where over time they start to dial that stuff in and come up with something new. But that's a good question. I don't I'm not smart enough to understand the math or physics behind that. What do you think, Ben? I mean, in the same as you, that I don't, un I don't have enough technical understanding to be able to predict where it's going to go. But just looking at how things have progressed, say in the last twenty years, in lens technology, when you were looking at super wide lenses, um, twenty, thirty years ago, you know, getting them that were sh anything sort of other than the the center with any level of sharpness was pretty much unheard of. Uh, distortion was huge in all of them, and now we're seeing lenses that are sharp pretty much corner to corner and wide and that we're not getting that barreling. You've just been reviewing that lens with zero distortion. So just on that kind of accelerating curve of technology and advancement in it, I would say yes, but mm. I just don't know enough of the physics of it to be able to say, yes, yeah, because this particular element or this coating or whatever, I don't, I don't know the technology behind it, but we've seen huge leaps. You were talking about that, um, the, the Sigma, the Sigma, um, 1835 that everyone uses like mm. that if someone had told you 20 years ago that you would have that range at 1.8 you know that's that's a fairly huge advancement and i think that's just going to keep keep going yeah nice. and and also i should mention because somebody brings this up uh there's clear image zoom on on like the sony cameras so you can take uh a wider lens and effectively a prime and like I could take uh, this uh, bodice 25 millimeter lens and on the 
you know, on an A7 series, which I have down here, using that clear image zoom, I can effectively get the same field of view as a 50 millimeter. I'm not going to get the same depth of field as a 50 millimeter, but there's some really cool stuff going on with how you can use your lenses now with these camera systems, right. especially because we have higher resolution sensors. I have not seen this 40 millimeter pink uh, f.85 lens that is being mentioned here. Uh, I'd like to see that. So Kino Tika some... did a video on it. It it looks like a uh, uh, 1990s soap opera f soft filter wide open. <laughs> oh, when you're actually using it. So it's it's yeah. definitely not sharp edge to edge. All the way open. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Kai, did, Kai did a video on it too. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Um, okay, so those are some, some feelings on some wide lenses. I would love to hear what other... We're seeing some people... Um, make some mentions of some other wide lenses that they like this 7.5 millimeter m uh micro four third lens um 16 f14 from sigma uh mm -hmm. which i have not tried but i know when that came out people lost their minds so i should mm -hmm. probably give that a shot at some point any other faster options to the canon 10 to 18 that are uh, also affordable because that's a i mean that's a great vlogging lens yeah, if you're if yeah. you're if you're just running around just because of the field of view but anybody um out there do you can think of anything that's especially ef mount that is uh faster than the 10 to 18. no that's that's a tough one um I mean, you might look into those. I mean, it depends on what system you're on, but there are some lenses out there that go wide and they're, they start at 2.8 and they go to F4. Yeah. There's a lot of those for Panasonic. Right. Sony 10 um, to 18. Yeah. That Olymp Olympus makes some beautiful wide lenses too. Some of their zooms um, are really nice. So, yeah. Nice. Cool. All right. Which, where are we going now? All right. So, Ben, what's your next set, your next range? All right. Well, I guess I have I have a zoom and I have a a prime in that kind of next step up. So sure, I'm going to start with my favorite lens, which is my Sigma Art, which we've talked about already. But the 35 one four. Mm. If I'm going on holiday, that's all I take, mm. and I love and often I, I use it a lot for interviews. Um, but I tend to use the zooms quite often on sort of run and gunny kind of jobs. But for if it, to my own sort of hobby photography, that's always the one that I take. Um, and at the moment, that has got a speed booster on it. So when I'm using that on the A7R, I can use that as a 35 uh, in the video mode with the crop uh, on with the R. Uh, or I can use that with the mc11 sigma adapter and have that more like a 50 a little bit less but it, it gives you the two focal lengths as jen was saying earlier that now using those um the crop sensors and on the particularly the um the e-mount that you've got an awful lot of options um, and we spoke about this a few weeks ago about mounts and where you're putting your money and there's so many camera systems coming there's this new one from leica and panasonic um and it always seems to me that when I'm buying lenses, that they're long-term investments. Mm -hmm. And cam cameras, cameras kind of come and go, but the lenses here, and the other one in that range that I use a lot, which isn't the sharpest lens on earth, but it's a really good range, um, which is the Canon 2472 AL. Um, I've had that for probably 10 years. Yeah, I was gonna say mm -hmm. that's the OG model, right? Yeah. Oh, original. God. OG. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, that's that's kind of generally what I'm thinking about in lenses. It's kind of ten years, and right now it still feels to me like EF is kind of quite a safe bet. Mm. You can adapt that down to um, to micro four thirds low. Obviously, that that's a very severe crop on that, um, or find down to the crop center bodies as well with the APS C sort of sizes. So. Super 35. So at the moment, to me, that still seems like a safe bet, that mount. I know what you two think on, on that. Maybe you've got other ideas. Well, I don't have a very different idea. I mean, um, I would say, first of all, uh, I'm also living in the same world as you. Uh, I, I did a video. Um, I think it's one of the new gearboxes. I can never remember where I compared a lot of these sort of 
middle range zoom lenses from Canon. Uh, I have the original uh, 24 to 70, the version one L lens. And probably the next lens that I'm gonna buy professionally is gonna be the version two of that 24 to 70. Because I tried the right. 24 to 70 F4 with IS. Um, it's great to have the image stabilization on it. Um, but honestly, um, it you know all three of those lenses uh, sit in sort of a similar quality to the sort of ubiquitous you know DSLR lens that everybody has been using, which is a 24 to 105, which isn't really an f4 all the way through because when you get to the longer end of the lens, there's definitely a drop in terms of um, you know in terms of your exposure. Um, but it's uh, the the 24 to 70 f2. I mean uh, version two is sharp as a tack. And I have found that, um, especially when I'm punching in and I'm shooting in UHD 4K, that I have a, a much easier time when we are finishing in 1080 or I just need to push in a little bit with that version two of the 24 to 70 from Canon. So I think that that's probably gonna be my next purchase. It has been mm -hmm. the A camera lens that we use for almost all the educational stuff that I do when I can um, basically obtain the lens. Uh, so anything I've done with Canon, I've used that 24 to 70 version two. And I think it's uh, a pretty special lens. You know, every once in a while, some will come along that are kind of like that. And I think that that lens is like that. I think there's some truth to what you're saying as well in terms of it being um, a, a semi-safe bet when you buy into EF mount right now, unless you're, of course, going to PL mount. And that's generally, uh, you know, cinematographers who are making bigger investments yeah. overall. Um, but if you commit to E mount lenses, you're kind of committed to you know to that mount system. So the versatility of E mount and any mirrorless camera is tremendous because of the short flange distance and and what you can do with other lenses to put it on there. Uh, but you know I think a lot of people used to be a lot of Nikon or Nikon as well, but I think we're finding that um, that there's a big trend towards that. Uh, so I talked enough for now. You can keep going, mm -hmm. Caleb. No, I would agree. I would agree. I think we have at least another 10 years before people start to rethink that at least 10 more years because mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it'll work on everything. Like I bought the the EOS R and no RF lenses because that little adapter and you're back in business. So, yeah, um, right. So I'll also follow along with what Ben was saying and, and pull out a, a 35. Um, so this I only have one more autofocus lens and all the rest are vintage uh, manual. Uh, this is the Mir M-I-R uh, 24M, which is a 35 millimeter. I don't know why the Russians mess around with all that stuff. It's a 35 millimeter F2. So this one has, you know, let's see if the focus will kick in here. Actually, let me click my face so I can see what's going on. Er, there we go. Um, Huh? Huh? Come Wait, on, Sony. There, there we it go. is. There it is. Nice. Cool. Let's see if we can catch the light there. There we go. Um, F2. So, you know, a little faster. And uh, it's just really nice. It's, it's got all these lenses. I have a set of these uh, Russians. They all kind of look the same. There's a couple Helioses in there, some mirror and some other stuff. But they're all like made nice. in the same factories. And I don't know. 80s 90s in russia uh or east germany depending on what era you bought them mm. um and yeah they're it's really it's got that like cloudy in a good way look you know what i mean it's almost yeah, like it's almost milky. every single yeah almost every single one of these lenses almost feels like it has a built-in pro mist filter black pro mist filter <laughs> Uh, so just really, really nice. But this one, I uh, fish, you know, I just really dig that 35 millimeter F2, which is kind of rare for the old stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, back back then, only really Canon and Nikon had fast like 1.8 35s. Yeah. So, yeah, really, really, really dig that one. Um, I'll just quickly do another one. Oh, my camera just there cut out, is. didn't it? Yeah. All baby. right. Yeah. Apparently, I've got a dying HDMI. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you yes. fine. All right. So your picture's ben, gone for a second. Up. We'll come back to the <laughs> okay. rest ben, of these later. Ben, can I just jump in for a second? 
I've got a yeah. comment here. Uh, so this is from Rimrock Creative Media, and uh, this person, uh, I don't know, male, female, but Rimrock Creative Media, Fujinon MK lenses. Let me just say, mm. now this is where the argument, not argument, this is where the discussion of making an investment into EF versus really becomes interesting because yeah. – Right now, the Fujinon MK lenses, these are zooms. If you don't know about them, then the rock you have been living under should be removed. Um, so we have two zooms in that line, and they are now available in um, both E-mount, and they are also available in uh, what's called X-mount, which is the mount for the... Uh, you know, for these guys right here, the Fujinon, uh, you know, uh, whatever you call them, mirrorless cameras. The um, Those two lenses are amazing. I have used them a fair amount now. And um, if, I, if I invested in the right or the, the, a camera system that I thought would be right for what I'm doing, um, I would very, very seriously consider getting both of those MK lenses from Fujinon. So. Right. I think if you were running an FS5, they'd be, mm -hmm. there'd be no question going for those. Yeah, or FS7 yeah. too. I mean, if you made the investment yeah, into yeah. the camera, yeah. so either, I mean, either of those yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. You could have both of those in your bag and, you know, just one, maybe two really, you know, great little prime lenses, and you would barely be grabbing anything else anytime because the range that they're covering is phenomenal. What are you getting? 18 to 135, I believe. Um, between the two lenses, is that correct? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so I mean, uh, there's no gap. So it's, I mean, I love the Sigmas, but you don't get that 18 to 35, and then 50 to 100 with that 15 millimeter gap. So they're they're yeah. they're giving you like it's bonkers. Um, those lenses are those are rock star lenses and super lightweight. And they, they're built so nicely, yeah. But they really exactly. are. They. they you see, when you pick them up, the things are they're fairly meaty things. They they are broadcast lenses. They look like broadcast lenses. Hmm. And you pick them up and you it's surprising how featherweight you those can, things you are. You can you can hand hold them for days. It's ridiculous. They, they remind they, me of the Canon twenty uh, seventy to two hundred F four. That kind of like size, you know? Yeah. Dude, right. This is this is one of my favorite lenses, period. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. I love that lens. <laughs> Not the yeah. sharpest in the world, but par focal. Uh, nice image. Yes, Chris, I agree. Chris just asked if uh, if what they're like handheld. They're heavier, obviously, but they're what, but the they're MKs? not they're not they're not that yeah. heavy. But no, they're, not, they're not. But they're not no. massive. No, I mean, they're not plastic, but they're not like they look sometimes larger than they feel and and are in real life. Yeah, I think that. I mean, for what they are, they're very lightweight, and and that's testament to the E mount. Um, because you couldn't pull that off with an EF mount right now. That lens would be, that's I'm sure one of the reasons that we haven't seen those two lenses in yeah. EF mount. Um, I, but yeah. honestly, even if they were a little bit bigger, I wish Fujinon would make those in EF mount because yeah. I would, again, yeah. really seriously consider those. Um, you once saw someone adapt a Fujinon to a Panasonic with a cage rig? What the hell's going on? That is tripping. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's wild. Um, Alex Wood, though. He would. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. one of those those I can see him hunting the forums, finding this juicy stuff that yeah, you should share that. If you can find a link to that or, or something, unless you're talking about some some guy that literally showed it to you, that'd be cool to see, Alex. Yeah, if it didn't happen yeah. in a dark alley somewhere, then we'd yeah. like to see it. <laughs> Check out this adapter. Um right, where where are we? Where did I, we uh I died and I'm back. I didn't I didn't do any uh, medium focal lengths. You, did you do any? You did, man. No, you showed, I, oh. not really. No, you didn't yeah, either. I, I didn't. Let me just throw mine out real quick because it's only one. I didn't bring my uh, Jupiter. Love their 50 millimeter stuff. Uh, yeah. Olympus, Zuko, Gem. I know you're a huge fan and have like a whole set of those. Yeah, old, I only have their 50. I have, right, oh, the, they're fi I have the 55 one too, which is redonk. Damn, it's like sorry. not, not, not sharp wide open, but it's right. It's awesome sauce. Yeah. Um, the only 50 I have on my desk that, cause I forgot to give the other ones is the Zeiss, uh, for Sony 55. Yes. Well, it's not a 50, 55, one, eight. Dude, that is a fantastic mm. lens. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
That it's, lens uh, is a rock star lens. That is sharp as a tack and is just a low light. As a, I love that lens. It's a really pretty look on this. Um, I just wish there was a small camera that had the chops to like deliver. <laughs> you know, I've talked about the A7 III and all, you know, Sony's previous a7 series cameras just aren't quite there compared to like the gh5s when it comes to shooting log all that good stuff but yep. when that mm -hmm. camera arrives someday which it will uh this is this is going to be a phenomenal uh lens to go along with it i i wish there was like a version of every focal length that was made this well because that's what i hate about sony right now is unless you go zeiss there's no set you can't nope. buy mm -hmm. the zeiss sony collab version of the lenses in 28 35 55 85 you nope. gotta hop all these crazy lines yep. <sighs> otherwise the sony 85 is also nice but that's the only 50 i got can um, we uh can we talk about that that's actually a great thing that you're bringing up and um mm -hmm. so i have i have two bodice lenses i have a 25 and i have an 85 which is on mm. uh which is on this a7 uh, s camera and What's interesting is that um, they don't make uh, a 50 or a 55 because of that lens that you just picked up, Caleb. And so um, that's, a, that's a disadvantage. And, and I don't think we're ever going to see it. The closest that we're going to see is probably this new bodice 40 millimeter lens, which is a focal right, length that right. I absolutely love. But there's no 50 or 55. Um, so you're either kind of forced to go with the... 55 that you have which is the logical one or you go and you it's not fast though you get the 24 to 70 which is sort of the kit lens for the you know the a7 series it's actually quite a good lens i mean a 24 to 70 f4 so for e-mount that lives on the camera quite a bit um yeah so there you go boom boom uh any other 50s before we move on to telephoto land I do have one in I here, but I'm not, I feel I feel like a jerk showing it because it's too expensive. Oh, so. I know, I know what's coming. Is it out. cook? Does it me no, does it's it right. me that? Yeah, it does. It's beautiful. Yeah, I've I've played I've I've played with this big heavy. What thing. what is it? He's played with my big heavy lens. Okay. Um, <laughs> go on, go it's on, the, get it out. No, you're dying it's a, to. The the Otis fifty five. Ah. It's a dream. It's a dream, but you know, it's it's uh, obviously no image it stabilization. Is. Huh? It is a beautiful thing, though. It's an amazing thing. I just, I don't like 50 mil as a focal length. I don't find it. I like 40 I a lot more. You know, there. Yeah, I'm the yeah. same. I like 35, and I like then sort of going up to 85, but I just find 50s neither here nor there. It's it's not super tight. It's not giving me enough yep. um, of the scene. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, hence why I've never bought one. And are you talking, um, are you talking... Uh, full frame or or crop? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking. Well, I'm talking full frame. Once you're into crop, then it becomes quite useful as a. As a yeah, so yeah. I find that I go to to 55s or 56s. Um, I, this is just borrowed right now, but the 56 one two from Olympus is a beautiful portrait lens um, when you're using it on a a crop sensor camera. Um, sure. You know, and and so I think it's a great focal length for that. I, I kind of agree with you, but then I know a lot of photographers who still swear by 50. Um, yeah, likewise. I, and I think, I, think a lot of it, I, I think a lot of it has to do with um, how a particular person uh, perceives how they see the world. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, so to them, they might be, um, they might be you know, on, on a full-frame camera, and just the way that they interpret the world is going to be more like a, on a 50. And then there's other people who go in the opposite direction, and they love to see the world um, on the 35, of course, which is probably the most popular full-frame street photography focal length for, for many reasons. Yeah. Uh, and then they go even wider. On a crop sensor, um, the lens that sort of hangs out on the Fuji camera, I have an X-E2. Uh, this is just a, a borrowed uh, X-T3. And the 27 is like the, and it's similar to the 40 millimeter in terms of focal length on a, on a full yeah. frame camera. And so I tend to really like that kind of focal length. So I think it's how you see the world a lot can have a lot to do with it. Um, yeah. yeah. So the, yeah. the 24 on a, the, the 24 on a super 35 gives you that closer to 35, which has always been to my favorite photographer, um, 
Cad Elka, his stuff is all just the way he frames stuff with the 35 is amazing because it has that real intimacy to it in that you can put uh, subjects quite close up, but you've still got context in the image, which I love. Yeah. But you can still too. separate maybe, it. You've still got separation out. Maybe uh, we talk about focal lengths in our uh, next part. Favorite focal lengths? Right. What, when, yeah. when to choose okay. what? Totally. When do you step back and punch in, or when do you move forward and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, pop out? Oh, that sounded weird. Um, so <laughs> how many more lenses do we have here to fit in our uh, 19 rem remaining minutes here? Yeah, so ben, we're you're right next. Now. Yeah, and, and it, okay. so in it, yeah, at about quarter two, we start getting into the, the, the Q&A part of this uh, pretty heavily. Um, anything is fair game, by the way, in, uh, in camera and flash. So even though we have our general topic, you can bring up other things that have to do with cameras and lighting and things like that. Um, and we do encourage uh, feedback in terms of future topics. But, um, but we've got about another five minutes where we're kind of talking about our stuff, and then we really want to get the conversation going. We do a hard out because of this thing called family. Uh, so this is an hour long uh, show every week, and we're getting better at that now, and I think we're going to keep to it. So um, let, yeah, let's go over to Ben. And Ben, why don't you talk to us a little bit about getting past the sort of normal focal range and into okay. uh, longer? Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna talk about this particular lens. We did mention this on a previous episode, which I think was maybe the investments one again. Mm, mm. But this is my 70 to 200, mm. um, which is the Mark One. It's the 28 with the image stabilization on. So I don't know how old this thing is. This is probably. I don't know, 15, 20 years old, mm. I guess. Um, and this has a story which I will tell again. Um, this lens was owned by a kind of a friend of a friend who was the picture editor for the Daily Mirror newspaper in the UK. And after the shuttle that crashed on re-entry, I can't remember which, which shuttle it was, um, but there was a, a hiatus for two or three years while NASA kind of figured out what it was made sure that that problem was sorted out. And then they flew the world's press um, to Cape Canaveral to watch the launch of the shuttle again once it started flying. And this guy went over with, um, I don't know how many bodies, he had like six or seven bodies with different focal length lenses on. And the thing got delayed and delayed and delayed. And he took everything back to his villa where he was staying. He knocked this off, smashed it on the floor, everything shattered. Hmm. He flew up to B&H, bought the 100-400, came back to Florida, shot the shuttle launch the next day, came back and had this rebuilt. I then did the same thing with it. I let it roll out of the, the trunk of a car. It had a flat, no lip on it, and the thing went out and smashed again. So this is what we call in England Trigger's Broom. It's 15 years old, but I don't think there's a single element of it that, that's really that old. Mm. If anyone can tell me on the, uh, on the, the, the chat uh, which TV show the reference to Trigger's Broom is from, you get a special prize. Um, so this is great. It still works really nice. It's still really sharp. Um, it's still in, I mean, everything's worn off it. All the numbers are worn off it. But I still love this lens. Really love it. Um, I'd like to try the Mark II just to see what the differences are with it. But this has just been with me forever. I'm quite emotionally attached to this one for some reason. It mm. just has a bit of a story to it. So how about you two with the longer ones? Well, you do have a huge lens, as Alex says. Um, and what the hell is XSplit, by the way? Uh, I think that's a uh, software for live streaming or something. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Longer nice. focal lengths, telephoto. Caleb? Jim? Me? Oh. oh, I'm up. I thought, I I thought you were up, yeah. I don't Go. care, sure. Um, so I already showed the, the 70 to 200. I like it because it has IS. It's par focal. Zoom all the way in. You can zoom in and out for days if you're in the same position, and it'll keep focus. Um, it's a nice little lens. I mean, for handheld stuff, I think it's great. So I use that a lot. Um, I have some, you know, I am partial to 85. I think that that's a focal length mm -hmm. that I like a lot. So I do have uh, an 85 Milvis lens that I use. And, of course, I'm using that focal length on some of the zoom lenses um, or going through to that focal length. Uh, and then the bodice 85 as well. So I think that that 85 uh, fits a lot into what I'm doing. Um, I don't own it, but I am also partial to a 100 millimeter macro 
for certain things. So uh, I've used the Canon 100L uh, a lot, and uh, I've used the Milvis, uh, well, it, wasn't, it is a Milvis now, but the original classic Zeiss 100 mil macro. Um, and then occasionally we will uh, use the 100 to 400 Canon if we really need to get further reach on a, you know, on a, on a large sensor camera. Uh, but it's not a lens that fits too much into the stuff that I'm doing. And when you start to get into those really long focal lengths, a lot of that is for people who are shooting nature. Um, they're shooting sports, you know, um, yeah. they're, they're in locations where they have to have that far reach. They obviously want to have that really shallow depth of field as well, which is just naturally going to happen because of the optics and the focal length. Um, so the fact that some of those lenses um, aren't as fast isn't necessarily as much of a factor as long as there's a lot of available light coming in. So you've got a 3.5 to a 5.6, but it goes to a 400 millimeter focal length. It's like, you know, you've got, you know, shallow depth of field and uh, bokeh for days. And so, um, you know, the biggest problem, of course, in those situations is if you are in a studio based environment or a practical location and you don't have enough available light. Um, but the depth of field part of it isn't really an issue. So I, I think that that's I, and I saw a great uh, thing here, Caleb. Somebody wants to talk about uh vintage lenses i think that also yeah. could be a great future episode oh yeah um yeah. that's where we we could we could pull out some of i mean trust me all of us you know we're showing lenses that are sort of our everyday workhorse lenses but there's a lot of lenses that are hanging out around here mm -hmm. that uh we can we can pull out of our different bags and stuff like that and talk about as some of our favorites and i i'd love to do it because i some of them i haven't actually pulled out and put on the camera for a while and i'd love to uh to do that so what about nice. you, Caleb? Uh, telephoto, Ooh, longer focal 30 length? 30-second uh, round. Uh, yep. Sony 85-1.8 is mm. dynamite. Um, I don't really care for anything Panasonic telephoto. They just don't really speak to me. Um, lots of... I use a lot of vintage uh, on the telephoto end. So this is the Jupiter 9, which is legendary. Uh, manual mm. focus Russian lens. Yeah. Uh, 15 aperture blades. Wow. So that perfect round... Wow. Jeez, man. Uh, all Where, the way through. It, wait, so you only buy those used now? Well, you can't only you can only get them used. They're all yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they you know Russians took over, walked by this giant uh, building that said Zeiss on the side of it, and we're like, huh, let's uh take some of those designs. Uh, same story with this guy. This is a 135, which I don't use that much, but I really dig. Same thing, 12 blades on, on this one, I think. Yeah. Uh, both of these are deep they come you know smooth there's no clicks and then the last lens i have with me here and people were, were talking about this at the beginning uh is the tamron 28 to 75 oh, yeah. for sony e and the story with this is just just finish this video and then go buy it there's no reason not to have this lens um sell it something else <laughs> and buy it because the size is amazing i read it's actually uh par focal which I didn't know. Wow. Wait, that's E-mount e only? E-mount only, but you can see how yep. small it is. I mean, it looks kind of big on camera, but I mean, it's not big. 2.8 uh, autofocus is as good as all Sony native glass. So I just mm -hmm. leave it on autofocus. And that pretty much lives on the A7 now. I don't really change lenses anymore just because it's so good. Yep. Um, great minimum focus distance. That's it for me, good. I think. Good. Uh, let's get into Q and A. Boom. We got some good comments here. Uh, who do you want? Should I pick one up first? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You pick one up, Ben. You pick. If you, has there been one that you read? Whatever. Let's do it. No, well, so, so someone John managed to get the uh, the reference to Trigger's Broom, which was uh, Only Fools and Horses. There's a scene in it where there's a road sweeper. And he says he's got an award for uh, all his long service. And the whole time, he's only had one broom, 20 years in the job, sweeping the road. He said in that time, of course, it's had uh, 10 new handles and 15 new heads. So, so that has now entered the lexicon as Trigger's broom, something that has been had parts replaced so many times that there's nothing yes. left of the original. There cool. You go. So well done, John. Nice. Uh, but that was it. I haven't spotted any others. So if you've, if you've spotted one, dive in. Caleb, you got one? Um, I'm searching here. 
Okay, I'll, I'll acknowledge digital filmmaker. Um, I do have a 1.4x extender for the 70 to 200. It does make it more useful. You do have to remember anytime you're using extenders that you do get light loss. Uh, so it's not just a straight, I'm getting a longer uh, range out of my lens. I am also losing light. So you just have to be, be aware of that when you're doing that. It's kind of like a reverse speed booster, <laughs> kind of. Um, <laughs> I don't what know. Was that? I don't know. I just, I try. I just made a weird noise. Uh, it happens sometimes. I'm getting older, you know. I'm sure that'll get worse as time goes on. <laughs> Caleb, uh, I'm trying to. Here we go. Uh, Chris, this is a, a little further up in the chat. Um, says sharpness is it overrated. Lol. Hmm. Well. Hmm. So there is. I suppose a discussion about in the 4K and ever increasing resolution age mm. as to whether we get to a point where, well, one, our lenses that we already have able to resolve that detail. But beyond that, if they are, is that actually making people look any good? Mm -hmm. And that there's, yep. there's a lot of, there's been this kind of market and filters coming out to try and, uh, try and soften that off a little bit because you don't really want to see every pore and yeah at what point do we yeah is it really making things look ugly and it's not just uh not seeing things detailed that much but uh just the look and and uh, the, the other day and i didn't bring any out here but i love canon fd lenses they're great for sony and micro four thirds because you can take advantage of them mm. and uh this this the gh5s or gh5 have a 6k sensor downscaling into cinema 4k that's a lot of sharpness right a lot of yeah, resolution yeah. when you're mm -hmm. distributing in 4k let alone sure. 1080 and when you throw the FD on there, it's just something magical happens because you're you still mm -hmm. have tons of detail. But there's this with like it's almost like uh, adding like a, a frost gel to your light. Mm. It's just yeah, it's gorgeous. Whereas that sucked in like 1080 720p days. Yeah. Um, this is kind of uh, an aside question. Uh, is there a really good color grading resource? Uh, Tau of color would be a good one to look at. Uh, really yeah, some great that. colorists there. And uh, there's also uh, a, a brand new course, though you, you can buy it independently or you can become a member of MZ Pro. And uh, Ollie, uh, he's out of England, he's a, he's a colorist. Um, he seems to have put together a really, really nice comprehensive course on color grading. Um, and there's some other resources. If you're part of LinkedIn Learning, there'll be some things inside of the library, but Tau of Color, and that new course on uh, MZ Pro uh, would be two things that I would take uh, a look at. Um, any lenses disappoint us? Um, I, I would say long term, um, unfortunately, I, I think that as much as I've used it, uh, the the twenty four to one hundred five. Um, you know, now that I've I've spent a long time using a lot of different lenses, I think it kind of disappoints me. Um, you know, I think it's a workhorse, uh, but I don't. I don't, I don't feel like it's a lens that I really want to put on my camera uh, all of the time anymore. So I'd say that for me, that's that's a lens that kind of disappoints me, especially with you know that twenty four to seventy version two. Uh, it doesn't have the same reach, but it's just so much better in terms of a, a zoom lens. Ben. Uh, yeah, I suppose the same because I have used that lens quite a bit as well, and it never really excites me mm. um but then if we're talking about things that excite me that 1635 that's on here now it's kind of a workhorse and it does a fine job of stuff but it, it it's never it, it's never particularly impressive anything that comes off it in terms of what the lens is giving it mm. gives me options of things which is great but i it's it's not something i particularly love and the same with that 2470 as well i like it um and the, and i'm the same as you that i think now with having made this switch over to the c200 um and the canon lens is working so beautifully with that and quietly that the mark ii 2470 is probably the next thing on my shopping list as well um yep yeah 
I can't think of anything what? else that's really disappointed me other than uh, kind of second-hand vintage lenses, which are so hit and miss. Get uh, one that was built on the Friday afternoon versus one that was built on the Wednesday, and yeah, bad they're, copy they're versus good copy. Building. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Caleb, what what's uh, that trash can over your left shoulder behind you? <laughs> well, is there anything that you felt like throwing into that trash can recently or over time? Uh, not really. I would say like overall. I mean, same thing as Ben. You you get some like you're excited for a vintage lens and it turns out to be trash. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm really bored with Sony. A lot of Sony options. I would say like their APS-C zooms are just really lackluster, except for like the Zeiss sixteen to fifty or sixteen to seventy. That one's really nice. But yes, all, pretty much nice. a lot of the Sony like ten to eighteen. It's a good focal range. The lens is meh. Um, so I'd love to see more stuff like that fifty five. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, and, and at this point, they have so many 50 to 55 millimeter lenses that are E mount. Um, are we ever going to see that? No, but, but only one that does good autofocus. Right. All exactly. the rest are terrible. Terrible. Um, yes, I will do an episode on best gear of 2018. So will Caleb probably. Um, maybe one day Ben will get his own channel going. Oh, no. I, I'm, I'm making my first my my first one next week. Yes. So I'm yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna sh I'm gonna shoot this job I'm doing next week, which is gonna be quite an interesting job. So you're I, doing the I'm one here on Wednesday. I'm doing mm. the one next week. Yeah. So I'm I'm traveling for days, shooting then for three days. So it's two days traveling there, shooting for three days, two days traveling back. So I'm gonna vlog. Well, I'm gonna make a an episode about that and then we'll see if that continues on um but there is a question from shimon about um weatherproofing on lenses being fairly important for you yes very much so and which is also part of the reason why i've jumped to the c200 because it does have weather sealing on uh to a, a large extent i haven't tested it fully yet but i've been using it in cold conditions it was minus eight degrees celsius here this morning so i went out and shot some stuff just to see how the batteries held up fine no difference at all really yep. um so yeah weather, weather sealing and again this thing that i was very much going down the sigma route of things and now um i'm looking back at canon's own lenses partly because of the weather sealing and partly because of the quiet af but i'm going to test the rest of the sigma art series primes that my friend has that i shoot with a lot um on this camera body and we'll see how noisy they are uh, but yeah weather sealing is a big deal Particularly, since I'm shooting in um, the Lake District quite a lot. So that's northern, northwest England, and it rains an awful lot. So even not particularly extreme conditions, but uh, I always used to shoot stills with Canon bodies um, and Canon glass that was weather sealed, and I never ever had a problem shooting out in the rain. So yeah, cool. So uh, you know what I just heard, Caleb, and I'm really far away from your state. I heard pitter patter. Of little feet and that Did means you? it's time to take it's time to take us out because i see the clock and uh as much as i'd like to hang out for a little while and continue drinking with you fine fellows and our amazing group of viewers who are basically uh very many of them becoming part of the family and uh Absolutely. really awesome to see a lot of new names this week up on the oh list. yeah Absolutely. This is great. Yeah. So um, take us out, Mr. Caleb Pike, and uh, let them know what to do. Well, the first thing they should do is just underneath this video, hit subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell notification as well so you can catch these. Thank you so much. We have a, we have a bunch of new names, which has been a blast. So for those uh, who have been trucking with us, love seeing your lovely faces. For those uh, new, we'd love to have you next week. So every Wednesday, 5 p.m., uh, one hour long here with these gentlemen. Uh, 6 p.m. Their information. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern. Eastern. 6 Eastern. Midnight in Central Europe. There you go. Um, <laughs> please join us again. And uh, maybe, yeah, we'd love, we'd love chatting with you guys. Information to all these gentlemen are in the description below. And uh, this was a good one. I love yeah. it. Mm, yeah. Can't wait for part two. Uh, slight chance we might not have our fine friend Ben Barden next week. He's going to give ah. us an update earlier than later on that. Otherwise, uh, 
Caleb and I are going to make trouble together. It's never good when it's just the two of us. <laughs> oh, let me just no, tell it's you. So bad. Oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> so uh, tune in, and uh, we really appreciate it, everybody. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great one, guys. Catch you later. Take care. Good night.